This is the Six Figure Chick Podcast, Episode 11, featuring Stephen King Jr., Director of Sales and Business Development at Other Designs, Director of Memberships for the Eastern Region Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, and one of the baddest singers around. Please welcome Stephen King Jr. This has been another episode of the Six Figure Chick Podcast. Please be sure to join us next time for some more hard-hitting career and business advice. To stay connected, follow me on Instagram at Cherie Griffith Dunn. And if you would like to be a part of the baddest club around, join High Performing Women Academy, the place where you belong. Go to hpwacademy.com. And as always, if you like what you hear, come back and next time, bring a friend. If you're interested in sponsoring, donating, or even advertising your business with me, please contact me at connect at sheriegriffithdunn.com. Uh, Oh, I guess we got to switch it up now. All right. Welcome to our virtual green room, where you get to hear the ins and outs and the things that you normally would never hear from here, from all of us right now, right here. Oh, boy. (laughs) Close on. So just FYI. Game time. Yikes. Get it. I wasn't sure. I said, man, just in case they try to do something live, let me do something. Well, we make sure you're proper. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I came on, see she had a jacket on, I was like, oh, not to be. And then I seen you. <laughs> Get it together. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh my gosh. So you guys are going to have to let me in on what this, uh, what do you call alpha? Alpha is, you oh, know. Oh, my. Yeah, man. Where did where, where did you where did you go to did you go to college? You, Actually, you... I am from the tro- I'm a tropical flavor. I am from the beautiful island of the West Indies, Jamaica. Okay. Okay. Yes. So you went to school in the states, or I went to school in the Caribbean. Okay. Yes. So uh, um, college, I came. I I went to college here. You know. Okay. But. Uh, I did all my high school and everything back home. Got it. Mm-hmm. So they didn't have any Greeks on, on campus when you was coming through? I mean, what we did was things like brownie or, yep. you know, <laughs> you know yeah. stuff like that. We, 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 it was different from what Cherie is telling me about, all the craziness that goes on in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, let, okay. You know, I need to say, oh, guys. I know. Okay. Her every- goes on yeah literally generated i just was very general about some of the things that could happen never no, what please. happened i ain't mad what you doing you ain't gonna sue me i'm, I'm not mad but tell the truth but i need a, i need a baseline so we are we in the 30 so i'm 47 are we in that range i need to know because if all of a sudden you start talking you're like oh yeah so when i'm you know when i get 30 i'll be like 30 you're safe let's say that Okay, when, praise the Lord. Okay, he, I just need to know where we at so that we have these conversations. That, you know, <laughs> wow, I don't know what I'll do when I turn forty-five. What? The, oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Go to mute, delete. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Love it. Stop the recording. Good, good. Okay, okay. Recording. That's right. <laughs> Why didn't know she was from like the G five G age? Back then, you know, when Cass was like, yeah, <laughs> listen, but listen, we used to have this um, wall. Well, not used to, it's still there. It's a wall um, right below the uh, the cafeteria yeah. that's where all the Kappas were. And we used to call it the wall of ignorance. No offense, Kappas, but I'm telling you when people would just lose their minds. Yeah. That on that wall and they would just be stepping and yeah capped off the side yeah. with the canes yeah yeah Mm-mm, pretty boys go ahead that's yeah, all right I called them something else and it's I, I can't say but right yeah no this yeah because this is recorded this is life now we gotta <laughs> shout out capped off side yeah <laughs> so what y'all were doing that what do you call it sorority what do you call it sorority she, she says sorority yeah. What is they, they, they said, yeah, sobriety checks. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what they that's what they was doing. That's exactly what they was doing. They was trying to stay sober. Yeah. We were yeah, not you, oh, absolutely not ever. No, that is not how that worked. Mm -mm. No, no, Sari. We, you know, we have standards. We do not do that. There you go. We're, we're professional at all times. All we times. Have, Alpha Phi Alpha is a non-hazing, non-pledging organization. Right. Period. Sorry. Boy, put my paddle down. <laughs> <laughs> We're sticking with that. No, for all you t all you college students out there listening, that you know, the best thing you could do truly pledge, pledge, pledge. Yeah, it, it is an amazing experience, and the sisterhood and the brotherhood that you have yep. is something that you will never ever experience in right. your life. No, no, you no wouldn't. You meet no matter where, what city you're in, what state you're in, they or have, country or country, they embrace you with open arms as if you are truly their family. So right. Mm. It's and it's you know, but everybody goes through their own individual process, and this is about it's, it's life in terms, especially if you go through the right process. Um, you find out a lot about yourself. You find mm -hmm. I, I found out more about myself after I crossed. In terms of, uh, it's like almost like being a, I, you know, I'm into Marvel comics and well, comics in general, but it's like being a superhero, like, and all of a sudden finding out you have certain powers. You know, wow. you don't know through your process that you have these powers. No different than what you ladies are doing in this sense, right? You don't know until you are doing it, whether it's forced or whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I can do like five things at once and be focused mm. on all of those. And yeah. then how, when did I learn that? Online. Right. And I also... <laughs> You know, you as an individual, you, you, you always put yourself up a level, mm. right? Because you have a standard to uphold. Mm. And um, you realize that um, you can get any job that you want. You can do anything that you want um, because you belong to a powerful organization where people have contacts and will help and assist you. So th that's the, you know, the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. If people learn, but again, you got to learn how to use that resource. Like a lot of cats, they go through and don't recognize the power of networking or better yet, they don't recognize the power of, and this is a life lesson of not cutting off your nose despite your face. Mm -hmm. You never know who somebody is and you acting all kind of whatever. And then come to find out, oh, I didn't realize that you are Delta, you're AKA, or you're such and such, you're Alpha. What? Oh, wow. My dad's an Alpha. I would never have expected you to act that way. And it's a wrap. Right. You're done. And, you know, and it, but again, it's a life lesson. It's not just Greek, but if you, you don't treat not, not so much the golden rule piece, but respect everybody for who they are, where they're at, mm -hmm. and their journey. But if you try to act like, you know, yeah, you can be up here, no doubt. But don't try to be like you're above somebody else. And I think mm. cats get caught out there real quick, um, you know. And, but again, that's that's not just Greek, but that's just real life. You know, you just you just never know. Like even with this right here, as soon as she said, yo, Steve, let's do this. OK. <laughs> Why? Because, you know, I've asked her and because and that's what you expect. But. But then when it doesn't happen, okay, I know where that person's at now. Now, I did learn that in Greek life. You, you learn real quick uh, who different people are and what section to kind of put them in, what box, so to speak. Like, I'm not going to ask somebody that, you know, this is not their lane to do this. Right. You know, again, another life lesson, which I'm, you know, teaching my kid. Don't want you find out where somebody's at okay appreciate them for where they're at right don't treat them less than just because they don't do what you do or so on and so forth you know um but that that's something i definitely learned the hard way i remember when i first moved up here uh and joined my alumni chapter and making certain power moves because you you think everybody's gonna be at your level or mm -hmm. or be where you at I wasn't married yet and I had kids, nothing. So, you know, I was a complete 
What do you mean you can't be, you can't do this, you can't do that? I'm married. What you talking about? Married, I got a son or a daughter, whatever. But I couldn't, you know, and then somebody pulled me aside, I was like, come here, come here. Let me talk to you. Like we talked about earlier. Let me talk to you for a minute. Come in here. You good. That's what our young people need, right? Yep. And even us, right? We need oh, yeah. someone to, to be willing to check us, right? Put us in our place, mentor us and support us. Right. Um, so it's just like you said with my bio. You were like, hey, hey, I need to help you with this. And if you're not like maybe 20 years ago, Steve would have been like, come on now. I'm a Penn State grad. I'm a UConn MBA. Check your, you know, check your own bio. <laughs> now I'm like, that whatever you think is gonna make it better. Because if I if you know, that's the thing, you know, if I succeed, you succeed, we succeed. You know, but if you if, man, even scripture says it, you can't think of yourself higher than you ought. Get caught real quick, get humble. And all of a sudden be like, hey, hey, man. you know what I tell you, and I'm talking too much right now, but I've realized this because I sing. You know, I sing with a Motown review group and some other stuff. And uh, a lot of people don't know that. And so they'll treat me some kind of way when they see me in the world, so to speak. Mm. And then all of a sudden they'll go to some concert. And they say, Steve, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I'm one of the singers. What? And all of a sudden you want to be like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm talking about. But all of a sudden you show up, you didn't know I was pledging. They throw you a little something from the- Yeah, you know? yes. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's definitely my- Right. But you know, you it's just like- You're my best friend, you know. Huh? You're my best friend. Yeah, no, now, yeah, can you get my girls in? Can you do, I was like, whoa, whoa. Just a second ago, when I was trying to ask you on the dance floor, you had nothing to say. It's like, oh no, we we just here. Right. Can you get me and my girlfriends in? Yeah. <laughs> Especially, well, now we can take a flashback and get, exactly. And that's exactly what y'all. What? <laughs> what? what? That's what? What? <laughs> I can't with you, Sheree. <laughs> you know yeah. I love uh, VIP. So. Exactly. You know, you know, light skin behind was getting in places. <laughs> you know, <she's> like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know, we have, we got to work a little harder for our chocolate behinds. It's like, okay, you know, yeah. But that was Greek life, too, as soon as I cross. Oh, you you that alpha. You was in the step show. Yeah, what's up? No, nothing. I was just telling my girl about you. What was you doing later? <laughs> You're like, okay. wait, before I was an alpha, you didn't want to be bothered. Nothing. Nothing. So Not I'm gonna talk 10. to your girlfriend because she didn't say she she ain't got no exactly. Bias. Let me talk to the wallflower that's over there. Mm. Let me holler at her real quick. And then all of a sudden, Shopper Ranks came on, and I knew she wasn't no wallflower. She was just waiting for the right song. Hello. <laughs> all right, let us get started. Hi, oh, I'm Grace Dunn, and I'm Nyoka Wright Smith. And this is the Six Figure Chick weekly podcast to help you win at work in your business, at home, and succeed at life. The year of the Black woman is shaping out to be one powerful year. We are excited to bring enriched content about Black people, especially Black women, who are pioneers and trailblazers of this country. Today, we will continue our discussion about Black women, Latina women, and Native women, about men supporting women of color. And we will talk to men who are, well, they're in that support game. As the saying goes, behind every good woman is a good man, but behind every good man is a good woman. We want to thank all of our listeners. We truly appreciate your feedback and five-star ratings for our podcast. We do this because we know how important it is to have a voice for Black and Latino women, especially now. Today, we will learn from one of the greats, the Alpha, not the Omega. This gentleman right here is not only my friend, but a supporter 
He's my brother from another mother. He is a passionate community leader. What's going on? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Cherie, I'm telling you, we all need good friends in our lives. Oh my gosh. That's why I'm glad that we are offering this platform for women who don't have support system, but need one. You know what I mean? Absolutely, Nayoka. I sure do. You know, it's an honor and a pleasure to introduce Stephen King Jr. Brother Stephen King Jr. is the Director Sales and Business Development at Other Designs. He's also the Executive Director of Eastern Region. Since 2017, he serves on the worship team and uh, with the nursery ministry. He's heavily involved in Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity since 1993, where he has held various leadership positions from president to director with a warm brother love. Steve, <laughs> welcome. Stephen King Jr. from Philadelphia. It's a yeah. game time. Let's go. It's game time. Let's get it. What's going on, ladies? Happy to be here. Uh, it, we're so excited to have you here uh, today, Steve. We know that you are, you have a depth of knowledge. You're well-rounded and your support that you're continuously giving to the young people and right. always wanting to see them reach heights that perhaps you never reached in your right. life, but are in the process of reaching. Yep. Uh, so we're just glad to have you here to support and bless our community uh, with your knowledge. Awesome, Thank awesome, you. awesome. Excited, let's go. Oh my gosh, we are more than excited. And you see, you're rubbing your hands already? Yeah, because we got yeah, some- Yeah, let's get it, man. I, I, whenever you have an opportunity to, to share some knowledge or just to have good conversation with real people, Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm about that. Like life is too short to be all stuck up. Let's, let's have some fun. Some... And that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. That, I'm good. That is awesome. And that's what we want to, we, we want to talk about real talk. Okay. Because okay. real talk is when we call what, what we call men supporting women. Right. right. Uh, because so often we're in this category where women and men are concerned where, where, you know, women are working some type of jobs and the brothers are not and there are situations so that's what we're going to be bringing to the table today okay. um so thank you so much for being on our podcast and uh, we're just celebrating you being on our podcast being that it's the year of the black woman <laughs> we're just not highlighting right. all the brothers okay let's get it uh, so my question for you is what made you start branching out in social media the way that you are doing it right now? Branching out into social media. So I think that uh, it started probably years ago when I was a recruiter and, and seeing uh, how uh, certain things, remember when Facebook first came out, you know, everybody thought it was a cheating mechanism. Everybody was like, what are you doing on Facebook? Like, ain't you with somebody? And, and then we found out that it was really a connector for people, especially depending on where you live. A lot of us are transplants. We're not born and raised here, um, so on and so forth, in high school, college, whatever. And so when it became that, that type of a connector and seeing a lot of people that you hadn't seen in a while, but also um, in, in how it's evolved, where mm -hmm. you can meet people that you don't know just from being connected to other people. And so when I started to see that, and especially in line with from going to being a recruiter to working at Enterprise Rent-A-Car and actually selling cars online in terms of reaching out to people to where I'm currently at uh, with other designs and, and, and doing print and business work and all those types of things with individuals, it, it just it came into play. Now, I'd say probably the biggest thing that I learned about it was uh, in the fraternity and yes i'm an alpha so alpha Phi Alpha fraternity incorporated shout out nice no six um was when i wanted to hold events with the fraternity 
And when you want to sell tickets or whatever, you have to find other means and other mechanisms to do that. And social media just became a huge hub for that. And uh, so once I started to kind of use that and learn how to use it and work with other people that knew a little bit more than I did, wow. it, it just blew up. So that that was probably one of the, the, the biggest things for me awesome. in that regard. Awesome. So for our audience sake, you know, yep. because they don't know you. Right. I'm sure a bunch of people also know you, but for those who do not know you, tell right. us a little bit about you. What type of services do you offer? So for me, uh, so I should probably back. So born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, you know, now living in South Windsor, Connecticut, wife, two children, Roman and Sophia. Uh, Sophia is 16, Roman is 11. Uh, we still go back to Philadelphia, you know, even in this kind of COVID era, but not so much. But uh, graduated from Penn State University, UConn MBA. Uh, fortunately, the Lord had me on a path in which eventually landed as a sales and business director at Other Designs. And a lot of what we do is helping small businesses, well, businesses of every size, but my, my real focus is trying to help those small businesses expand their brand in a way that they're not accustomed or used to doing. Uh, everybody sounds good in the shower, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, people, especially our, us uh, people of color, you know, we love telling somebody that we just opened a business and we could be the best that we are, right? And our family supports us and so on and so forth. But how do you extend that, right? You could be the best at what you do, but if nobody knows about it, or better yet, when you introduce yourself, how do you leave that impression so that when somebody walks away, they, they'll come back to you? Or if somebody asks, they'll say, oh, no, I know somebody. Let me refer you. And so that, that's what I really, especially in our communities, trying to help those people. If you, you, you have to spend finances on marketing and branding yourself. Now, you have to know what your brand is. And fortunately, we got some experts in such as you guys that can talk to that a little bit more eloquently than I can. But for me, it's saying, okay, let's come up with a plan. But more importantly, let's just figure out how to get you out there so that when somebody puts you up against somebody else, you don't come up short. Because mm. you, you could be the best that you are. But if you come up short, somebody, you know, as they say, you know, um, the first uh, appearance sp speaks volumes. And if that first time that somebody speaks to you, like I remember uh, watching a TV show, uh, Sean Diddy Combs said, if, I, if we're going up in an elevator together and you don't catch me by the next floor. And so that's my job is to help somebody get out what they need to before they get to that next floor so they can continue to go on the ascent. It's not the descent. All right, all right. You, hear, you heard it here, everybody. <laughs> yeah. You heard it here. He is the man. Steve's the man. Steve's the man. <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to try make it happen, man. Just trying to help other folks out. We can't do it by ourselves. And that's the other piece. You can't, right. you're not going to be successful by yourself. You got to have others to help. This is so true. And while we're highlighting you, tell yep. us, where can people reach you? So, so there's a number of ways. So you can hit me up at sking, S-K-I-N-G, at otherdesigns.com. Uh, phone number. You have no problem giving it out, 860-531-8895. Um, hit me up on, on either one of those. Not a problem at all. Reach out all the time. I answer my phone, get a text back, whatever. And, and let's connect and make it happen. Let's learn from each other. Wonderful. Get a singing telegram back. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you might. You know, you're going to get at that first. You, you know, we got to establish a little relationship. But uh, yeah, that, that, that might happen. Because you know why? It, it's funny that you say that. Because sometimes we need a break. Like we're so focused, we're so focused, we're so focused. And then up all of a sudden, you know, I just, you know, say, good morning, good morning. This why I was like, what in the heck did he just do? And there you go. <sighs> okay, I was having a rough one, but then that fool just left that message. Put a smile on my face. Okay, let me recalibrate. And now I can get on with my day. So that's usually when I kind of drop those little nuggets just to surprise somebody. Oh, 
okay, and okay. Now, it might be worth you recording a couple of those and uh, sharing them on your Facebook Ooh. page so that Ooh. people can have those little nice touches and those. Oh, I like moments. that knowledge. Or, okay. you know, I, you know, I wouldn't be a executive business growth coach if I didn't say you could also monetize that process. Oh, you know, that's, <laughs> we definitely gonna make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Freedom is not free. So let's not even me. It's not so, free. I love it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's yeah. Make, put a little job, drop a little nugget and then be like, right. well, for the next one. Exactly. That's what they're doing these days. Good, good, good. You're not going to charge me for that later. Are you? That, no. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> so I heard from the little uh, parakeet, you know, okay. that um, you can be very modest, but, uh, you know, you don't flaunt it that you mm. are a professional singer. Yes. Um, yes, I do get paid to sing and um, wow. been doing it. Yep. For a very long time. Philadelphia Boys Choir and uh you know, certain things pop up in life. And one day, man, I think I've been singing with this group. I want to say at least 10 plus years, probably. Let's see, since Roman. So yeah. And uh, we're a Motown review group, Soul Sound Review. Well, actually, you know, obviously everything got shut down by the coronavirus. Right. Um, but now things are starting to open back up, be back out there. I think we already started getting dates in June. So it's a, a nine piece live band. A lot of mm. Motown. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of the, there's three lead singers of which I'm one. And um, think uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, if you will. Um, so I'm, I'm the, the high tenor. So I, I have the high voice. Okay. And so, yeah. So a lot of that. You yeah, have the women yeah. screaming. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're surprised when we get up there and, you know, all of a sudden when I'm talking like this and then the music come on and it's like a, like they, you know, the best person to say it, there's a difference between Beyonce and Sasha Fierce. I'm Beyonce, you know, I'm Stephen King at home. But then when I get out there, you know, the light comes on. Let's go. Let's give the people what they ask for. Let's give them what they want. And then that's, you know, that's wow. just the, the fun of it. It's well, you're in good company because Nyoka sings. What? <laughs> okay. Let's let's get it. That's why she tried to work that in there so she could drop her own little nugget. See, that's why you can't trust black folk. Let's see, she tried. Let's put Steve out there. He's gonna be great. Steve, we heard you sing. Come on, girl, help me out. Make sure you mention. Yeah, see, make sure you mention that I do a little something. <laughs> we want to yeah. hear you bust out a no before oh. you go today okay <laughs> right, okay okay we'll we'll, we'll do it we'll, we'll, we'll do a, a little a little oh man now i gotta gurgle okay. oh glory oh, Steve, I, I, I don't sing but i am a really good front person i'm okay. like that hype person yeah and, and i look good and okay i tell everybody that's 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 it i well it's just funny that you say that because when I was in college and, and I was part of a group, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot it that quick. But anyway, I'll, I'll remember it. But I was part of a three, another, no, we four or five man group. And uh, we opened up for Brownstone and some other groups back in the day. And uh, I remember when I was doing my interview for this group, and they were like, well, who do you like? And I was like, oh, I'm a huge Johnny Gill fan, huge, you know, um, uh, Wanye Morris, you know, Boys and Men. I said, uh, Aaron Hall, and they were like, oh, so you like to sing in groups and then leave them. I was like, what? No, I didn't, no, I'm a, I'm, but I'm a background dude. If you need me to come out, be ready for me to come out. Just like Juan Ye. Nobody knew that boy could sing until they gave him like bend the knee or something. They was like, who is that? You know, and he had, he went through his little thing, but I, I enjoyed to your point about being a, you know, a front person, Man, I'll hype you up on the side, sister. I'll be like, go ahead, girl, sing it, sing, sing. And then all of a sudden, they'll be like, boop. And then that's when I, you sure you want to, sure you want to hand this mic off? Okay. <laughs> let's, let's have a good time. But yeah, I, hey, ain't nothing wrong with a front person. So let me write that down. Okay. <laughs> Cherie, you just put yourself out there, girl. <laughs> so, so we know who's opening for us. Bro, I, I want to sit in the front row seat. That's where I want to sit, though. 
Okay. <laughs> she, Aaron, you she ain't trying to just open up. But really, you can't hear in the back. Well, oh my gosh. this is your friend. And I'm just here for show. Listen, and who, okay, tell me, oh, let's take a poll. When you sit in the back. Yes. Most people ain't got no respect. Everybody talking. Ah, uh, that's, that's true too. They that's why. Because they can't hear. Oh, okay. I so never. So you can enjoy it and hear. Okay. So I'm not, man. That's why I always got to sit in the front. Okay. I never knew. Did you know that? I didn't know that. And you, besides, know you don't being belong in, on the back of the bus. Being in the front really is better connection. You know, you're well, connected yeah. with the artist much, you know. That is true. That is All true. Right. Although some people try to get too connected. And it's like, <laughs> you know, I'd be up there, you know, it's in the stone. And all of a sudden it's like, right, right. Okay, you're doing a little too much. What are you? No, I'm just, I'm just two stepping. So I'm just true. two stepping. All of a sudden it's never have yeah. my darling. All I of a sudden it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like pump your brakes there, woman. I'm married. Pump your brakes. Ain't that, ain't that type of party. This is just Please, a show. Us, how does your wife feel about you singing? You know, because I'm sure she's not there all the time. No, she's not there all the time. It so she, uh. An element of trust. Oh, it's huge. Oh, well, right. it's funny because now. So when I first started, um, you know, it was kind of cool, you know, brought a little money in the house. So that was okay. But then when people started connecting, <laughs> he brought up social media, people find you on there. Oh, I just saw you at your last show. Okay. It's good to see. I can't wait to see the next one. Who's this? And why are they friending? What is, who is? And so when that starts to happen, um, you know, say, hey, babe, you know how I am. That ain't, again, Beyonce, Sasha Fierce. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so, you know, she's been a, a couple, but then she's just like, all right, I know my husband. That's it. Now, I will say this. Every group, and I don't care what group it is, there's always groupies, right? And, uh, but there are also uh, den mothers, if you will people that are down with the group, but they'll, you know, they might bring food, all those types of things. They've been with the group forever and they are very protective. So as soon as they found out I was married with kids and all that other type of stuff, and then I introduced, they don't even play that. As soon as somebody comes over, oh, I just want, you know, I, every once in a while, I give a hug, whatever, pre-COVID. But they'd be like, yep, okay. <laughs> bring her back here. <laughs> yep. He's good. No, nope, he's all right. No, he doesn't need anything that he doesn't drink before. Nope. Mm -mm. Thank you. You okay. know, and so from that perspective, once she saw that, then that was it. Now she's friends with the, you know, there's about four or five dead mothers that our group has. Um, and they come to every, almost every show. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something else. But once people see it, they ain't trying to get out there and be embarrassed. I'm not, I'm not that type of dude. So good. good. Because not everybody's like you, I promise you. <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen it. And I'm just like, dog, what are you doing? You know, and I, I don't, I don't I, you know, I'm long past the judging stage, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to supporting, you know, when, but I'm, I'm real quick. You know, I have five sisters and a mother. And <laughs> I'm like, dude, where's your ring at? I'm not judging. I'm just saying when you was married, when you got married, you was, and now all of a sudden, you know, what's going on? Oh, yeah, it hurts. It's, what do you mean it hurts? Is it the ring of fire? What does it hurt? I don't understand. Uh, you know, I got a little too big. You can resize it. Mm. Y'all gonna put me out there where we're together and somebody say, oh, I thought they were all married. Uh, mm -mm. And I'm sure as heck not gonna be answering calls. Mm -mm. So, no, you're right. There's a lot of fools out there that, oh, you know, yeah. forget. Oh yeah. We're oh, happy yeah. that you're, you know, representing men because men get a bad rap. They yeah. Do. Um, and it's because some of those out there aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. right? right. Thank you for being a stand up <laughs> man. Who, Absolutely. You know, doing what you got to do. That is hey. so for real. That is so for real. So we wanted to ask a couple of questions as it pertains to yep. um 
for instance, you're married, right? Yep. So the question would be, what type of support would you give your wife knowing that she may want to advance her career? If she's, you know, a career person, what type of support would you give your wife? Because so, we want to understand, you know, we're going to get a little bit more into the, that question, but yep. just to opening up right there, I just want to find out your take on it. What type of support you give to your wife if she's a career woman and yep. she's branching out and advancing herself, how would you support her? So transparently, you know, I'm remarried. So uh, that divorce, da 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 and I think that's important because, you know, I can't stand when cats get online and fantasize about their past and all those types of things. So a lot of things learned, right? That said, though, when you talk about support of my first wife and even now, um, so I'll break up, is uh, I was a stay-at-home dad for two years. So uh, when my son was born, Roman, uh, we had made a decision that, and she was on a, a career path. She's a college professor. She was just going for tenure. And at this particular time, I was, I was making six figures. I was a recruiter. It was a very good time. And this is like uh, Romans 11. So 11 years ago, very good time. And the Lord blessed. And so we had some savings, built a house, all that type of stuff. And one day I have a child. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm the oldest of seven children. My parents are still together. Uh, like I said, I'm 47 years old. So they've been married. 50 plus years. So that's all I know. And my mom was a stay at home, right? And my dad had, you know, three jobs, maybe even four at a certain point. But I knew, especially, you know, and going to have a black child, you know, a child of color, that I want to raise my own child. Again, this is not judging anyone else, but I didn't want anybody else filling my child's head with anything outside because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they're, if they're going to school, whatever. I, I just wanted to give my child the basics before I had to put them out there. And so I was a stay-at-home dad for two years. And I tell anybody, and, and my wife, uh, my ex-wife now, but her career took off and it was awesome, you know, because I was already in a good space. You know, it wasn't, um, for me, marriage and that partnership and that support, that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, you go through ups and downs, whatever. But we in it together somehow, some way. You win, I win. We win. And so it was nothing for me to stay at home for those two years. I loved every bit of it. I have every picture, all those types of things. And I will tell you, it is the hardest job in the world to mm -hmm. be a stay-at-home parent. And a lot of parents now appreciate that due to this coronavirus. It is the hardest job in the world. You know, people thought I was watching TV all the time. I'm like, man, I got this kid. I don't even know what to do with him. Half the time, I want to throw him out the window, you know? And it wasn't until a friend of mine, a buddy said, yo, a kid only cries for three reasons, hungry, sleep, or they need a diaper change. Mm. That changed my world. Man, I was like, what? You mean to tell me that when Roman's crying, it's for one of those three reasons? Once I figured that out, I was like, nope, you don't need that. Oh, shoot, I forgot to feed you. That was it. But but in terms of the support, that's for me, that's where it started. Divorce, remarried. My wife, uh, she's a school teacher. Uh, man, I just realized. And the teachers, I guess. But anyway, um, when she was looking for a job, <laughs> quiet as kept, I was just whatever she needed in, mm. in the sense of whether it was me cooking, whether it was letting her fall asleep on the couch, telling the kids, be quiet. Mom is, you know, sleep, whatever. She's doing all these things. Matter of fact, let me take the kids out of the house, mm. you know, that she can focus or, you know, again, and maybe it's also because being the oldest, I never had a lot of me time, so to speak, because it was always somebody else around. I was free. You, you already know you got like 12 kids, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's when you have that, sometimes that, that little bit of time, even in the bathroom, you need that. Don't knock on this door, nothing. You know, and so in that case, I knew that she needed that. And so when she was doing her job search, and even now when she's teaching these kids and 
you know, if, as soon as I see that she's not herself, I'm like, oh, oh, let's go. So, we Steve, out. can you help men who yep. are listening get past this moment, right? Because you seem to have taken the opportunity to help your family and not work and do the duties that a woman ordinarily does. Right without having an, any issue or concern, but there's a lot of men out there who feel like they're a punk or yes. who have, you know, issues. Yep. Maybe they feel, you know, that the woman is, they're doing all this and the woman's going to leave or they're not mm. going to have anything left. Right. You know, what is the secret to what it is that, you know, mentally that you've been able to um, use to keep you strong? Well, from a support standpoint, I would suggest, especially if you have children, like they're the priority. There was never anything in my mind. For me, I always knew I could get a job. I could land a job. I could do, I, I was just that arrogant in that sense. But I knew and I learned, it's not overnight, but I made a decision, number one, that I was going to be committed regardless. Number two, I learned that it's a life is a lot easier, not the whole happy wife, happy life thing, because it, it really is happy spouse, happy house, because it falls on both sides. But since we're focusing on the women right now, that it, it's, it was just, it's easier for me to take the weight, because naturally that's what I'm supposed to do anyway. That's just what I believe. You seem like you took a vulnerable position mm. and you fit into uh, a position of uh, being heroic as being strong. Yes. So I like that. So maybe some men that are listening need to understand that if it's on their terms and that they're doing it because they feel that they're making the impact. That yes. Them that they have to do this because they're the man of that house. They're right. controlling that house and they're running, you know, whatever it is that they need to run. Maybe that would help them not feel so weak. Well, the right. man of the house is, it's interesting because we've, unfortunately, I don't know the right word to use. I was going to use a word, but just in case it goes public consumption, um, we mess up what that's supposed to mean, you know? Oh, you're the man of the house. You're supposed to be the only one earning money. You're supposed to be this. You're supposed to be that. You're supposed to be this other thing. When at the end of the day is, can you be supportive? The man of the house means that when you come in, everything else needs to be calm. Like we know when dad comes in or, or man, boyfriend, whatever, your spouse, when they come in, it's cool. No matter what the situation is, okay, dad's here. My husband's here. Everything's going to be okay. And so it shouldn't matter what lane other people think you're in. For example, I just, again, we having a transparent conversation. So being a stay-at-home dad was very, at the time we lived in uh, Vernon, Connecticut. And, uh, and uh, I remember going to, uh, what do they call it? Daycares, not daycares, but I was the only, first of all, I was the only man, let alone only black man. But I'm sitting with about four or five white women and, you know, like watching our children day. play. I forget yeah. what those things are called. Play but at that, Yeah. But she had set all those things up. And so I would drive to like Rocky Hill or whatever. And they were like, you know, and I came in with my Kangol and my, that, that time Tim's or whatever. And they're like, but I didn't look at that as a position of, of, of weakness. I looked at it as, no, I love my son. Mm -hmm. And for those other dudes that you, you can't be mad later in life that your child acts a certain way if you weren't there in the beginning to lay the foundation. And that's how I looked at it, especially that's in terms nugget. That's a yeah. nugget. Say that again. That is a nugget yeah. right there. So, yeah. So I, that's, that's, you know, again, you can't. And so if, if that's what she needed to do, because this is the other piece, right? There is nothing worse than someone who feels like their success or their life or whatever it may be is unfulfilled. And if I could impact that in a positive way, why wouldn't mm. I? And so, okay, babe, this is what you want to do? 
All right. Oh, I don't think we can afford it. We'll figure that out. I'm a, I'm a hustler. We'll figure that out later. If this is what you want to do, because because I've been on the other side where somebody didn't support me in, in what I wanted to do, you know, being man aside. But, you know, but hey, babe, this is what you want to go after? You want to go back to school? You want to do this? You know, my, my wife right now, she's, you know, going back to get her master's and so on and so forth. And I was like, she said, well, how are we going to pay for this? I was, we'll figure that out. Mm-hmm. whatever we gotta do you know and so that's that's that piece but in terms of our real men you know i had some fool ask me probably about a year or so ago do do i do you still kiss your son you're doing right i do are you I kidding me so. no now i'm not embarrassing my boy but we have our own little head bump every time he gets out the car i tell him i love him that's i love you in sign language and we go back and forth with that um so what? Let me get this straight. So I can kiss him and I could be in all these little social media photos. And but then as he gets older, I no. But that's what happens, especially in our communities. And then we wonder why men are so angry, is because they don't have that emotional connection. And I said, nah, I'm not doing that with my son. If the Lord blesses me with a son, I'm gonna give him so much love that he'll know because then he'll be able to be supportive, be loving. It's okay to be emotional. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be angry. And, and let's have that communication. Now I'm not kissing you on the lips like I was when he was a baby, but I'm still mm-hmm. like, all right, son, love you, man. And that's it. And even in that, it's being supportive because, you know, my wife, it, it's showing that it's okay. You don't got to be rough and tough all the time. Mm-hmm. No. And so she knows that my son is going to be like that. And that our son, excuse me, is going to be that way, you know, growing up. So again, man, if I want to, if you, if you want your child, you've got to bring that foundation. You can't let somebody else outside do that. And that's what I, I was not willing to do that. And for me, that that's a stronger man, because that says that you're putting your family, you're putting your spouse, you're putting your house before yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then how did she feel about you yep. working from home? well you weren't working right no were- not not then i mean now but yeah not not then i think it was um it was a transition i mean obviously she was doing her thing you know so you know for her it was a lot easier especially at the time he was born breastfeeding and all that type of stuff we really want to be again transparent and have a real conversation so i was doing this stuff with the bottle i was you know he was in our room and whenever it was that time going to get him i wasn't angry about you know, you get some cats that forget, well, you had the child, dude. What are you talking about? Mm -mm. It's not that type of party. You know, you got to take care of everybody so that everybody can kind of grow together. And so I think that she definitely um, appreciated it uh, in that sense. And I know uh, my wife now, she appreciates that when I'm like, all right, kids, get in the car. Where are we going? Don't worry about it. We'll see you in a little bit. Just do whatever you want to do. All right. And nine times out of ten to sleep, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. But it, it, yeah, those days that like, girl, come on, let's go. No, they're, they're done. They're done. You know, <laughs> you know. But even if she did that, because you, you need to re-energize, you know. And so um, I know, I know for a fact that she appreciates that. I know for a fact that she appreciates even when I'm out going back to the music thing when I introduce her to people. You know, I don't, I don't. She's just not some side chick. That's my wife. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's going on? It's such, such, and such, 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 and such. Oh, okay. Then I know I didn't I didn't I didn't realize it until she said it to me later. I just did that out of respect. But until she did that later, to your point, because a lot of cats don't do that. You know, so even if I'm singing in church, hey, it's my wife. Because everybody sees me because I'm a front guy, but they don't know, you know, the family and all those other types of things. And so, you know, uh, that's another way of being supportive by showing no this is who i'm with this Mm -hmm. is she supports me i support her how am i supporting her by introducing so you know this is who i'm with let there not be you know question from that regard and so i know that she appreciates that i know that the the kids appreciate it because they see it i'm praying you know even though he's only 11 that years from now right you know my son will say okay no this is the way even when we argue get upset with each other all right, then we make up or we apologize in front of our children. 
that's also being supportive to show that I'm no better than you just because I'm the man of the house. Mm -mm. Daddy makes mistakes too. And uh, dad messed up and I'm sorry. And, you know, all those types of things. Because, you know, it, again, you got to lay that, that foundation to show this is what you do. This is how you hold them up. Maybe not necessarily some people get caught up in a pedestal. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I'm worshiping your mother. No, that's not what I'm saying. But we hold each other up so that we're both strong, so that we can both be supportive of each other. You know, so that's kind of how that works. Right. So you have no problem whatsoever with a woman making more money than you. Well, that's a great question. I think I did when I was younger. <laughs> I definitely, you know, because I was, you know, I had my own money and so on and so forth. And you think that, yeah, I used to tease all the time, say, hey, I had no problem having a sugar mama. But then that <laughs> depends on, yeah, on how she is. You know, she lords that over you where you can't even go to 7-Eleven to get a Slurpee because you ain't, then that changes the dynamic. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, even now. I mean, you know, we're we're doing well by the grace of God, but you know, uh, she probably makes a little bit more than me. But she handles well. You know, I put it even even better. She handles our books. She handles our budget, and that's whether she was making more than me or not. Because at a certain time, she wasn't. You know, what? Now I had to get I had to get over that. You know, because there was a point because I was the man of my own money. And now you're telling me what I can buy or can't buy and so on and so forth. And, you know, you got to understand the difference between a want and a need. But once I got past that, you know, it was like life is better that way. Are there times sometimes where she'd be like, well, what's this for? I'm like, oh, this for 40, 47 years old? What do you mean? What's this for? Ask me. But but I recognize that it's about the family. Right. I budget these how things. Are you able to get comfortable with that, you know? Oh, yeah. That and that, but but hey, yeah. fellas, let, let me be real. And that happened overnight. <laughs> there was there was definitely, yeah, we got a queen size bed. Now a king. There was definitely some times where our feet were not touching. Let me just tell that. Keep it real. You know, but once you recognize the fact that, well, okay, what are you really fighting over? The fact that she said, Oh, you can't get this or get that that you really didn't need anyway then, you know, life is a lot easier if that's what she wants to do. She wants to run it. So, and, and make more to go back to your point, then that's fine. Even if I was a million dollar dude, it's not going to change the fact that she still runs the books. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I'm comfortable with that. It just makes life easier for us all. <laughs> yeah, ain't a lot of dudes out there that's like that. But once you get to that point, I tell you, and again, it's not judging. It's just what, what works. At the end of the day, certain things just work. And wow. yeah, so just make it work. Life's too short. Talk about the mindset, you know, because yes. that, that's, that's a shift right there, you know? Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I got a lot of friends that couldn't. A lot of dudes, mm -mm. they don't want no questions. They got to have at least, you know, three four $400 in their pocket all that type of stuff. I mean, she cut up the cards. I, think I got a, a debit card and, and, and one other. And then you learn how to, to do more with less. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And she's not worried about me all of a sudden, you know, we can't pay a bill or something just because I went buckshot. Right, right. No, mm -mm. no, and I'm good with that. Why? Because credit, we grown, we got children. You got to grow up sometimes, man. And, and if that's what it's going to take, then I'm, I'm all in support of how she's handling our, our home and our, and our finances. You know, that, what I'm hearing and what I really uh, am appreciating is, you know, it, it's further, it, it's more than support, right? I, you yeah. know, I hear a trust factor. Oh, I yeah. Hear, you know, uh, you really are taking your relationship with your wife and your family and, and being in this together seriously right mm -hmm. yep. um, and and i hear you know a lot of confidence about you and your wife and and how you feel about the things that just need to be done and you're a willing participant 
to do them for the better of the good of the team. Right. right. To keep it stronger. So you are that we're stronger together. Oh, without that. a doubt. I mean, man, if you if you think you're going to go out here and and be successful just purely on your own, especially if you're in a relationship, marriage notwithstanding, you're going to lose. You just are. Eventually you will because there is not going to be the trust. There is not going to be the support. I mean, what is the point if you can't be in a situation in which you know this person has your back? You know, I mean, what is, what's the point? Like, even if I'm wrong, and we've had this conversation, even if I'm wrong in, in front of other people, I'm right. And then she'll catch me later. Be like, you know, you was wrong, right? But I'm never going to put you out there on front street. Mm. And I'm the same way. I'm not going to, mm-mm, now. We had to grow to that because, you know, I was a child and did childish things and got my attitude and all that type of stuff. And she's from Philly, too. So she'll take off her earrings and say, see me outside then. You really, you really want to go? Did you really just open your mouth in front of my parents? OK. You know, and, and we grew, grew through that. But at the end of the day, if I can't and I am big on trust. Um, and that's just not in my that's in every relationship. If I, I allow probably three for you to really show me who you are because I'm always you can call me in the middle of the night you know hey Steve I'm in a situation all right I'll see you in a minute where you at and but once I feel like that's not either reciprocated or or better yet especially in public if we're out and you're acting a certain kind of way okay gotcha we cool but in a marriage and in a relationship yeah, that's a that's a completely mental thing that we do trust each other, even when we disagree. Uh, we give each other that leeway where it's like, all right, what's your mindset? All right. And that's then that's it. Like there's there's never by the grace of God, there has not been a situation where she says one thing and I say something else. Not with our children. Mm -mm. Because you can't do that. Because then, you know, and yes, kids will try to play you if you don't know, right? But that trust piece that I know that she's going to do the, what's best for our family and she knows the same thing, you have to be willing and supportive of that. We're not, and this is sometimes what cats get caught up in. I'm talking about cats, I'm saying men, where you think that you always got to have the last word. You think that in order to prove yourself a man, that you gotta be that one. And that's not necessarily the case, man. I think you prove yourself more if you're not. So that's 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 exactly where we're at. And trust is a big piece of that. Mm -hmm. Hey. Well, I really do think that that is definitely the key right there. And she has definitely earned your trust in that area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because if it if if she didn't you know if she didn't know her thing and on top of her game and know right. exactly what she's doing and showing you also that this is for the family that we're right. you know, what I'm trying to do here is to help us not to break us apart but to you know help to build us and you recognizing that and seeing that you were able to say okay you know I am not gonna fight over this why no. That would be nonsense, you know. It's not, crazy. So that yeah, someone is trying it. to see the good of everybody, the good of the family, and to go fighting against that, that wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. And it, even to the point where I, I'll tell her that she was very hesitant. She can't stand it. I'm like, yo, go out with your girls. Like, I trust them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just have to, like, you're not going to hang out Everybody has a little core friends or whatever, right? right? And so be with your core because even they're going to check you. Like, you know what you got at home. What are you doing? Or mm -hmm. whatever. Or even in that conversation, I remember one time we had a, a disagreement and uh, fight, but we had a, um, a disagreement and she told one of our girlfriends, she said, man, yeah, we haven't talked for like two days. She said, her girlfriend was like, talk to me in a week. Y you act like, you know, but but even in that, you're fighting against yourself. Because we always talk. 
So, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, come mm -hmm. to me first. We all lose. You know what I mean? It's just a stressful situation. So, so why even want that? Now, I'm not suggesting that it doesn't happen still, but now I'm more willing to be like, all right, my fault. I don't know what we got to do to make this right, but it makes everything worse. When we're fighting in the house, when it's supposed to be our comfort spot, it's supposed to be our support spot. I got enough to deal with in the outside world. You know, you have enough to deal with. And you, you know, just from our nature, the way that we were created, there is that nurturing side that she needs. And that needs, sometimes that needs to come from me, mm -hmm. you know? And so even in learning that piece and saying, okay, my fault, babe, you know, what you, you know, let me get these feet real quick. Man, it's sandpaper, but let me get these. You know, I did that once or twice. I think I, I can't remember. I really messed up. I can't remember what I did, but she went, she wanted to watch Hallmark. And I was like, Ugh. and I was like, all right, let me just sit here, put your feet up and just, you know, whatever. And, and that's what you got to do, man. You, you just have to. And the, the ones that learn that the quickest, their marriages are the better. Their relationships are the better. Even if it doesn't work out, at least you can say, yeah, I might have messed up once or twice, but at least I put in everything that I could. You know, you don't, I don't, I don't look back and say, man, I wish I would have done that differently. Mm -hmm. You know, from a relationship or a support standpoint. She's never going to say, yeah, man, I wanted to do this, but he never. You know, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's you know. I am loving this. I am hoping that the brothers are hearing this, Sheree. I am so so hoping that they are tuning in <laughs> this because you know you're saving some marriages here and you're saving some relationships here by educating the brothers and also the sisters right, right. Um, but so the brothers because we know that they have this huge ego <laughs> yeah no we do we do we do <laughs> yay you can still right. have it you can still have it dog you can still have it but what are you willing to compromise or lose for this additional person? I tell people all the time, you don't pay my bills. Mm. So you, you worried about somebody that don't pay your bills. Somebody that's not going to help your credit. Somebody that's not going to do X. Well, you worried about what they think. You're like, oh, you, did she talk to you that way? Yeah, she did. But she's paying our bills. So I don't know <laughs> what you want me to do. I mean... Oh, if it was me, yeah, that's why he's still single. <laughs> Come on, dog. So, yeah, yeah. So that's, I mean, so brothers, you know, it's just one of those things and dudes. And, but I will say also women, be respectful of, of your man too. Don't think that you can run buckshot because we still have oh, yeah. that nature in ourselves right. where we still want that respect. It's very true. The difference between the love and respect piece. Right, right. And, you know, and so for the women that I appreciate so much, you know, we both got to know our roles yes. and our place, not in a negative sense. Oh, you ain't my dad type of thing. No, that's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But we got to know how to, to, to work together. And I think that um, sometimes you, you can't listen to outside forces that aren't, oh, yeah. you know, helping oh, you inside. Nail right there. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> So for real, because your friends and your family members may want to jump in on something when they have no business getting in on that, you know, which is sometimes so good for, for a husband and wife, boyfriend or girlfriend, just handle yep, their situation, yep. right? Rather than getting family members and friends involved, because then when that happens, then they're getting outside information. You know, and that person is going to want to side with them because they're their friends. <laughs> right. Right. And then they're going to feed them some kind of information that had she or he just handle it together as adults. Right. Just talk, you know, and get to some kind of understanding or, you know, and, and would have worked it out that way, then it wouldn't have escalated and go left. Right. Very, very true. Yeah. <laughs> even when well even when you disagree you can't let everybody in on your disagreement mm -hmm. you can't roll out 
and roll your window down and ask everybody's opinion. Right. You know, my mom used to say to me a long time ago, I don't want to know when you and your wife are fighting because I'm always going to side with you, son. Mm-hmm. But you, I also know that you guys are going to make up. And now you done told me something that's now in my head and now I'm going to look at her differently because of that. And it's with friends too. You know, fortunately I've learned, you know, when people tell me about stuff, especially in their relationships or whatever, I'm just like, all right, and like, I don't judge that that woman or that man in, in a different type of way, unless it's something that's outside of the boundaries, obviously. But because mm-hmm. I know everybody goes through something, but if you can't, and it goes back to something you were talking about earlier in terms of trust. If you can't trust each other to know that we're going to work through this, again, you're going, you're going to, you're going to lose. If you think you're better, you think you're above, you think you're, you know, I'm the man, this is how it's supposed to go down. Cause I said, so yeah, I went through that period and lost every time. Mm-hmm. And especially when you have children, it, <laughs> just to look in their face, like, you know, they're, they, they know. And, 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 you know, I said, nah, man, I don't, I don't like that feeling, you know? And so it, that, that was also kind of that, that, that mental shift as well. And I think also you have to, and this is again, probably going into support factor, be proud of your spouse, be proud of who you with. You know, when you walk in a room, who are you walking in with? Do you like, especially going back to when I sing, Whenever I come off stage, that's whether it's church, whether it's in this Motown Review group, I always give her a kiss on the cheek. I want people to know, but more importantly, I want her to know that she's appreciated and there. Mm -hmm. You know, because even though she might not say anything, I know she's feeling it. You don't appreciate me. You're looking at these other women and all this other type of stuff. And, you know, and that's just another, again, since we're talking about support, I believe that that helps. Nobody wants to be ignored, you know, and especially when you're talking about a relationship where you walk into a room and now if you have that type where, you know, you're around your friends, she's around hers, cool. But when you're a mixed company and nobody knows everybody, y'all need to be together. You know, you need to be, I'm not saying be on top of each other, but you need to be, so everybody knows, oh, that they must be husband and wife. Oh, they must be, oh, they must be. If somebody's got asked a question, that's a problem because that's when stuff starts to happen. And so again, the trust, trust factor in, 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 in that. Wow. You got some people popping thank up. You. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. You have totally brought it. Yeah. <laughs> hey. totally, you spoke, you spoke like a king, a king hey. of your house. Praise you him. Well, a man that's, that knows, been through some things that can help other people. I pray so, because I at the end of the day, you know, even though, it, it, and this is the thing, right? Growing up, the oldest of seven, my parents still being together, even though my dad was the the breadwinner. You, we never, <laughs> we knew that mom made the decisions. You know, and he, again, in in knowing that and in learning that, it's the same way here. You know, I I just learned that even though I was she, I was afraid of my dad but I was more afraid of my mom in the sense of, cause she was that emotional piece, you know, and you don't want to let her down. And so even in carrying that over to married life, I want my children to see that, that same thing that even though, yeah, we know dad can be a hard guy. We know dad can be a fun guy, but at the end of the day, if mom says no, you might as well not even ask dad. You know, and I think that that's really, again, getting back to this whole who's the man of the house, who's the the, the, the head of the house. You know, people right. have just messed that all up and you could still be that. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's the partnership, it's the relationship piece. So it's not always perfect, but as long as you know that's where it needs to be, phew, makes life a, a, a lot easier. And, and, and you get some of the things that you want. You know, she she don't fight me on a lot of different things. Like she would have if I was a jerk. Mm-hmm. You know, I could say, man, I really would like to get this uh, this air fryer for this turkey. All right, how much is it? And then next thing I know, it's at the door. What? If I was a jerk, that wouldn't happen. We can't afford it. I told you, she runs the books. 
You can't do that. Nope. You want to be a jerk? Be careful with that jerky. Be careful because it's going to come back and bite you in the booty. And for what? I love it. I think that you have truly, you know, brought another level of teaching men the understanding piece of a relationship. Hmm. Um, and so thank you so very much. And also including children in there and making sure that you're a strong role model because it matters right. for you to be a strong more role model and for us. So we thank right. you so much for being with us. tonight, Nayoka, please tell everyone who you are. My name is Nayoka Wright Smith, and I am president of NAWS Coaching and Consulting LLC, and I'm a business wealth expert. I help my clients by empowering them with the knowledge, the skills, the guidance, and the recommendation they need to help them build wealth. We are so happy and excited that we had this amazing gentleman, Steve, on Ooh. our show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, Cherie, tell us a little bit about you. I'm Cherie Griffith Dunn, your executive business growth coach, motivational speaker, and international best selling author, founder and CEO of High Performing Women Academy, the place where you belong. We're now accepting applications. Please go to HPWA academy.com. I'm your gluten-free foodie, mom of six sons, married to the love of my life and obsessed with traveling. Thank you for joining us. If you are interested in starting your own podcast, go to podbean.com slash get it for a free month. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube at Six Figure Chick Podcast and leave us a comment. Bye for now. Bye for now. Be safe, ladies. This has been another episode of the Six Figure Chick Podcast. Please be sure to join us next time for some more hard-hitting career and business advice. To stay connected, follow me on Instagram at Cherie Griffith Dunn. And if you would like to be a part of the baddest club around, join High Performing Women Academy, the place where you belong. Go to hpwacademy.com. And as always, if you like what you hear, come back and next time, bring a friend. If you're interested in sponsoring, donating, or even advertising your business with me, please contact me at connect at sheriegriffithdunn.com.